back at Chi-Chi's House Podcast. So, producer. Yes, ma'am. We talked about last week. I took a poll. <laughs> what was the poll on? The poll was on the economy. Well, first, let me say everybody was coming for me about this economy thing. Yeah. So... I was like, I gotta have to, I'm gonna have to go back and do more research because everybody's like under the Biden administration, the economy is great. That's what they were saying. And I'm like, really? Because inflation is up. Property taxes are up. Price of eggs are up. <laughs> Everything is up. Like, what? Where are you guys? What are you looking at to tell me that the economy is good? Yeah, in a better place. Interest rates are high. So what were they saying to back there? Well, let's see. I got so many comments. They were coming for me. First of all, because I oh, said YouTube Latinos and, um, really and uh, <laughs> Latinos and Blacks should stick together. And boy, I got Black some serious. We got to stick together and go out there and vote. So I got a lot. Okay, so What's important to you? Marcus Perriman said the economy is good. Look at the real numbers. I said, okay, well, what's the real numbers then, Marcus? Yeah, what he say? What am I looking at? You ain't giving me no information. And then he was like, the numbers stay different. What numbers, yeah. Marcus? <laughs> are you looking face. at right? And then people are like, oh, people are so dumb. Biden can't control the economy. Dow Jones reached an all-time high on his watch. He produces oil to lower, to lower gas price. Cooperates, Greek. Cooperates, greed controls, price of eggs, utilities, etc. Joe is the man. Joe is the man. <laughs> and then, of course, Carmen Allen said Biden is doing a much better job than the orange buffoon. Check out Biden's <laughs> record buffoon. and you'd be surprised just how well Biden is actually doing. So we need to do our research then. Yeah, we'll do some more research. I mean, but you were you were you were saying Democratic. You was talking. Positive for the Democrats, though, yeah, right? I'm so why were they I'm coming blue. at you? I like told that? you, I bleed blue. I'm a crip. To the day I die, I don't care who. <laughs> Carlos can run for president. I'm going to vote for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, as long as he's blue. As long as he's blue. <laughs> but it's like, I still I stand on what I stand on. Mm -hmm. If you, and then, oh, I had Ron call me and say that, oh, are you putting out that people should vote Republican, that blacks and browns should I said, Ron, I did not say that. Yeah. That is not what I said. Where are you guys getting this from? What I said is we need to stick together. He was like, don't be telling them red to vote red. I was like, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I don't know. But people, I think some people misunderstand. No, the episode was called I Bleed Blue. I Bleed Blue. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So I did a poll. Do you think the economy is good? 39% said, and it keeps changing, 39% of people said yes, and 61% say no. And I'm going to stick to that, too, yeah, because at the so. end of the day, what I'm looking at is interest rates, inflation. So what? Gas is, I drive an infinity. Mm -hmm. I got to pay for premium gas. It's always going to be high. <laughs> so they're like... The gas prices are good, though. Yeah. Is that what you're basing your the economy the on? Economy on? I don't know where do people get this stuff from mm -hmm. i don't understand it you know but i did say i'm gonna stick on what i said do your research if you feel republicans are talking about what you stand for then stand for that i did find out what the slogans were though for this for the democrats this year oh well, what is it? oh i'm about to tell you because i thought it was interesting for real and did they even say who all is running for it's, the Democratic Party? Yeah, they Party? have three three people running for the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And I can only talk to you guys about the Democratic Party because I don't give a damn about them Republicans. So at this point, I'm not going to give you any information. You go out there and do your research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's Biden, Phillips, and Williamson. Okay. Okay, so Biden is, let's finish the job. <laughs> Phillips, it's time for change. And Williamson is a woman, mm -hmm. a new beginning. I'm thinking we need to go with the new beginning. Yeah, I would vote for a woman before anybody that's, I, you know, let's try something new. Like she said, a new, a beginning. new beginning. Yeah, let's try something new. Women are good with their money. Maybe I'm not, but they are. Ah. They, I mean, it's like, you know, 
I don't know, like, let's finish the race or finish what we what started. What we started, yeah. What is that all about? We didn't get off to a good start. <laughs> so why need- would we finish what we started? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not voting for Biden no matter what. So that's why I was asking who else is. Well, see, I'll vote for him just because he's blue. No. Nah. But we can't let the Republicans win the states, nah, though. He ain't been outside since he got elected. And he be tripping and falling. He too old. Yeah, he is a little <laughs> old. I don't know if he can withstand another four years. You think so? No, nah, he probably can't. But wow. then Kamala would I'm get in there. I'm surprised Kamala's not running for president. That's what I was saying. I would, why, though? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Usually she don't the vice want to... president will run for president. Yeah, maybe after her having the experience, she's like, I don't want to be I don't here. want to be the president maybe of the so. country. And I would hate for him something to happen to him, and then that's how she becomes president, because then nobody's going to, like, um, it's not like she was voted and she just ended up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was just replacing him, yeah. to, you know, until, I don't know. How many times has ha- that happened in the United States, though? I don't think where that's someone's ever happened. Passed I don't think that's happened. And someone's had to fill in. I don't think that's happened. I'm gonna check. Yeah, because I. But I know that's what happens if the president something. Yeah, was that to does happen. happen. Oh, maybe with Kennedy? Did that happen with Kennedy? I think so. Yeah, that's probably the only person so. that I'm thinking. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Carlos is snoring, y'all. That's all right. <laughs> Oh, did you see Jess Hilarious started? Yeah, she started. I don't they know. They said it was all a rollout. Charlemagne said, remember I was telling you last week? Like, no, it's something. He said it was all a rollout. They did all that on purpose. On purpose. Yeah, it's all about so Basically, clout. okay. Yeah. Okay. Just to be in the media, you know? How do you feel about listening to the, I mean, how do you think it sounds with her on there? I like it with her on there. But yeah. But I think the Breakfast Club is like, um, they don't hold the weight that they used to. It's more all about the streamers now. Oh really? You think so? Mm-hmm. I think they're they're whatever they put out in the air does hold weight. Like people start thinking like them. They have a lot of control over what people think. I don't know. You don't think so? I used to love the Breakfast Club. I don't watch it very much. Like you used much to much anymore. Yeah, it kind of just got repetitive and kind of boring. Oh, I don't really listen. I, only the snippets that they have on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So, oh. and I know that's not the. I shouldn't <laughs> that's say what that. That's about to say. You don't want people. Be I don't want people podcast. watching my snippets and judging my <laughs> podcast. But I feel like that's what that's all I watch. I have never been on the podcast to listen to a whole. Oh, you've episode. never seen the whole episode no. of any of them. Mm. I haven't. Yeah, it used to be very entertaining, but then Charlemagne, uh, he kind of his character changed as he became a more businessman. He stopped like attacking people the same, you know, not being as uh, controversial. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I, he just apologized to Monique. Oh, you know her? that? Yeah. I don't know. He said that. She said. I mean, it was a pretty good. I listened to that snippet where she came at him. Oh, uh, on Club and was Chase talking Day, about right? you know how talking about how women are underpaid. You yeah. know how Netflix tried to underpay her. Yeah. And he was talking about. Um, they were, he was talking about her and then he came back and apologized actually, Yeah. you know, because you got to look at it. I mean, people don't believe it, but women are paid a lot less than men. No, I believe it. Minority women are paid a lot less than men. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how are you going to say that that's not her experience? Cause you haven't experienced that. It's an inequality in pay. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he's paid less than Joe Rogan and, you know, other people. I'm sure. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But, um, yeah, I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. It's like, but he, you know, that was her experience. Now that Taraji P. Henson came out and said the same thing that Monique said, except Monique had the experience with Netflix. Mm -hmm. But Taraji P. Henson came out and said the same thing. No one bashed her. Yeah. I mean, they said that they, Oprah trying to blackball her. Because you know she was going straight at Oprah talking about Oprah. Because that's Oprah's movie. Yeah, Color Purple. And they said that, I don't know, they said Color Purple did horrible in the box office. I don't know if you've seen that. Really? It made like $2 million and they spent $17 million on it. You're lying. Yeah, I'm really done. shocked. It's already on streaming. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, that joint done flopped. Wow. Color I wonder Purple why. flopped. Do you think maybe because of what Taraji said? That's what they're trying to blame it on, too. They're like, oh, Taraji uh, put a smear campaign on it. Yeah. Yeah. But why would she underpay them? Who, Oprah? Exactly. So she did to herself? I think so. 
Because people look at that inequality, and especially women. Mm -hmm. Women stand for women. Women empowerment woman. is strong, and she's, she's a, a woman. woman. Yeah, so. yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I probably a lot of women. Women would probably go watch the color purple before men would. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So probably a lot of women when Taraji came out and said I was underpaid in this movie. They was like, oh yeah, we're not. Oh, we're not going to go support the movie then. Mm -hmm. We'll wait till it comes out on video or on TV it's or whatever. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a lot of women supporting women out here, mm -hmm. and as we should. Black and brown women, we should be supporting one another. And just because it's Oprah, so what, Oprah? You need to be paying people what they're worth. But if they're underpaying her in all her movies, I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, because she done did some big roles like, um, dang, what's the movie? When she has. This is one of my favorite movies, the one when they, she was the NASA and when she was working at NASA. Oh, know? yeah, yeah. That's... um. The numbers movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like the uh, mathematician in there. Yeah, that. that was a great movie. She should have got Hidden a, Figures. Yeah, yeah, that was a great she movie. She should have got an Oscar for that movie. Yeah, exactly. That was Hidden Figures. She's a great that was actor. a great. She's a great actress. Just because you see her in shows like um, what's that? The show that was out. Empire. Empire. Just because you see her in Empire. And she could be ratchet. That's her. That's her acting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. She takes on those kind of roles because she's good at that too. Mm -hmm. You know, when she came out, baby boy, that was like that's my ultimate number one besides Friday. Word. My classic, baby classic boy. movie. <laughs> I could watch that movie a million times. No, I love that movie too. because I love Tyrese in that movie, and you I know, love her Snoop in that too. movie. Yeah, and they Snoop, all that. like that movie, ultimate best movie. And they probably, you know, they say that sometimes when you take on a role like that, you get classified as being that type of yeah, character. Yeah, put you in a box. Yeah, they classify you as that type of character. So maybe that's why they, you know, she's being underpaid. Mm -hmm. A lot of the roles that she takes on. You know, it could be a little, I don't want to say hood, but it could be a little, you know, it's just that role. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think that determines her ability to act. And she's been in a lot of Tyler Perry movies. She's been in a lot of black films, right? Mm -hmm. So should she be underpaid because she's been in Tyler Perry movies? Uh, he should be paying them right, too, because he got bread. I don't know, but I know that... Um, I think that's what happened. A lot of women probably said, oh, Oprah didn't pay her what she wanted. All right, we're about to blackball Oprah. Two million, 17 million. They got a long wow. way to go to get that bread. Get that money back. How do you recoup that type of money when a movie flops? She don't flops? need that bread. She got money. <laughs> so did, does that mean that all the women in the movie got underpaid? Like Fantasia? Probably so, yeah, I would yeah. imagine. So if Taraji is complaining, underpaid. I'm sure, because Fantasia is really not an actress. Exactly. Was she underpaid as well? Yeah, they probably all were. Wow. That, that to me, that's, that's really disheartening, though. Because she's definitely worth whatever she... I always say this. Get what you're worth. That's like if my lawn man comes to me. It's so funny because I use this as an example mm -hmm. all the time. If my lawn man comes to me and says, he just cleaned up my yard. Mm -hmm. And he cut all the rubbish and stuff down. And he told me it's $300. I'm not going to dispute that with you because at the end of the day, that's your labor and that's your time. Mm -hmm. And you know what it takes to go out there and cut down trees and do the yard work. So if you tell me it's $300, I'm going to pay you $300. If I don't want to pay you $300, I'm going to find somebody who could do it exactly. for cheaper. Yeah, your price is your price. And your don't price like... is your price and you should stand on that. Mm -hmm. Why should you... You know, be if you don't want to negotiate. OK, well, you can find somebody else to do it, but it's not going to get done. This is what I what I noticed. You could pay somebody else to do it. But what I noticed, because I've, you know, my lawn man got hemmed up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to say why. Yeah, he, back now. he got hemmed up a little bit for a couple months and I had to get another lawn man. And, you know, I don't want to get out there and do the yard work because uh -huh. it's just too much. I'd rather pay somebody. But I had a half-ass lawn man. <laughs> so I always pay him what he's what he tells me. Oh, so the the replacement lawn man that you were using for some time wasn't doing a good. Oh a my good god, job. he was horrible. <laughs> he would come. He would come over here, and I'd be like, "You have to get the leaves up." Okay, when it turned into fall, mm -hmm. I was like, "You got to get the leaves up." 
Now, I'm going to tell you, all you have to do is blow the leaves from the back to the street. He was doing his job for him, telling him what telling to do. Telling him what to do. You blow them into the street. The city is going to come pick them up. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't get back there. My lawnmower won't let me back. Okay, nope. just blow them in a pile. Like, I had to tell him how to do his job, how to problem solve. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'm not a landscaper. Why am I telling you this? But I paid him what he thought he was worth, and, and he was, was not worth that. I wish I would have never paid him that. What was his price? Was it more expensive it than the It was a little bit dude? more expensive. See, look. <laughs> but I know what kind of work that I'm getting from the guy Love that I normally... Dude. I've been using him since 2020. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny because they used to work together, and then I started using him because they, they kind of broke up. So I started using his service because he was just a better lawn care service. Mm -hmm than the other guy but i had to go revert back to using him because i wasn't gonna get out there and cut the grass yeah, heck no. oh it's too much work for me but he did a half-ass job so when he comes back i'm like oh my god i'm so happy to see you mm -hmm. <laughs> like what the hell i've been looking for you like i told him everything i went through to yeah, look for him you, you know what I'm missed, saying? Yeah. oh my god because i was like what happened but that's what that's his worth mm -hmm. he knows what his worth is that's like it, it's so subjective Look. I could argue with you and say, no, nah, I'm not paying that much. But why? I just if I don't want to pay you that much, what I've experienced is that you go somewhere else and you don't get the quality of work. If that's the if you know you're getting quality work and that's the price of that quality, I'm going to pay it. Yeah, going to have to pay it. I'm going to pay it. I'm not going to dispute what you're worth. Yeah. Never. I'm like that with anything. If it's worth if it's worth it, I'm going to pay for it. Why not? Yeah, because you get what you pay for. You for get sure. what you... That, ha, that saying is so true. You <laughs> get exactly what you pay for. You pay. You want shit, you're going to get shit. You want quality, you're going to pay for quality. You know what I'm saying? Now, there's been times where I'd be like, all right, you know, I don't really want to pay that, but I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pay it mm -hmm. because I already know that when he does it, it's going to be done right. He's the only lawn service that i've had that's been great mm. he need to go up on his price then no don't say no, that look, look. he might hear, you. <laughs> he might hear the podcast that. i'm already paying a lot <laughs> exactly i'm already paying him a lot but it, it, he's worth it so we want to get what we're worth but you have to set the standard of what you're worth you mm -hmm. can't let anyone else determine your worth and sometimes it's going to require you to walk away from a lot of things yeah a I lot do of things often, yeah you know what i'm saying if you're going to leave a job, I'm not going to leave my job to go somewhere else and do the same thing. And y'all not going to pay me the as much as I'm making. And mm -hmm. if for me to leave, you're going to have to pay me a little bit more. I'm mm -hmm. not leaving. For what? Yeah, it's an inconvenience. It's, like it's an inconvenience. Over. First of all, I got to start over with new people. I might not like y'all. Exactly. I like who I work with. Why would I leave? But you have to, you know, you have to. You know, I had uh, someone tell me before, you have to be your own cheerleader. And sometimes if that, if a person doesn't want to pay you your worth, you, you have to walk away. Because yeah, people will take advantage of you. If you allow, the only way that people can take advantage of you is if you allow them to. If you allow them to. And if you're allowing them to say, this is my rate, they have to pay you according to your experience, mm -hmm. which you come to the table with. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, my name, my brand. You're going to pay me for my name and my brand because mm. I'm bringing some stuff. Taraji P. Henson, she's bringing some shit to the table. Come on. Her name alone exactly. in Hollywood should stand for something. But black women are not, Latino women and black women are not treated equally amongst their other counterparts, unfortunately. That's why I always say we change our appearance as we get more famous mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying latinos do anyway we change our appearance we ain't gonna wear the dark hair we might get blonde hair mm. we might try to fit in so we can take on different roles a black woman can't they can't do that yeah you know what i'm saying women of color they can kind of work it out where they can fit the, the part you know what i'm saying they can't do that if it requires a white woman if it's but now you're starting to see a lot of mixed, um, like in the movies, mm -hmm. like mixed couples. Oh, yeah, yeah. Commercials, everything. Everything. So it's like, wow. But in the movies before, it would be like, a, what movie was I watching? It was a biracial um, 
the couple was, um, I can't remember. It was a, a movie I was watching where the father was black and the mother was white. Mm -hmm. And the child looked biracial. So I was like, wow, they really doing it up now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're making them look like everyone else. They want, they want to capture people's attention by, you know, making them look like, oh, that person looks like me. Yeah, I think that the world ultimately is just going to be a it's big It's evolving and changing. Yeah. Big yeah. mixed melting pot. Yeah, don't say that too loud because a lot of people are not going to be happy. <laughs> they gonna be, it's all right. They ain't going to find my IG. They are going to be commenting on yours. <laughs> don't say that too loud because they come for me. Boy, yeah. they be coming for me. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, dang, really? Did this person just say that? But it's like, I don't know. Just like with the comments with the, you know, it was a Latin guy on there that said Trump 2024. And I was like, stupid. Like, uh, just retarded to me. Yeah. Like, what, what, what would make Latinos choose Trump as their, as their uh, president? How did he win over the Latin vote? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why they voted for him? Yeah, I mean, do you think all these migrants would be coming in if Trump was in? Was still the president? No, isn't he the one that put the wall up? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Like, how do you, as a Latin person, because we're not from this country. We are from other places, right? That's how I look at myself. Mm -hmm. I'm Panamanian. I'm not from here. You know what I'm saying? But what would make you vote for somebody that is trying to keep immigrants when the foundation of this country is built on, on immigrants? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? On the backs of people that, on the backs of people that are not even from here. You understand what I'm it's saying? It's always been like that. It's always been like that. So why would you vote as a Hispanic person and all he's talking about is building a wall to keep you out or to keep people like you out? Why would you vote for him? That shit makes no sense to me. Yeah, I, I, don't, I never understood that either. I don't get it. And it was like, he had like a 40% increase of Latin voters when he ran for president last time. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Um, as Latinos grow in the ability to vote, because a lot of people, I want to say, a lot of black and brown people, we don't really get out there and vote. You know, people showed up when Obama was... Yeah, I done voted every time since I've been able to vote. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm proud of you. I had to take Zaul out there with me, like, come on, we're yeah. going to vote. But, um... I just don't get it. Like, why are they voting for somebody that's trying to keep us out? They don't want us to to infiltrate the United States of America. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? No, I feel like we already infiltrated. Yeah, it's we too I mean, late. They, they can't, turn they it. can't take us out there ain't now. Nothing they can do now. Yeah, this is ours. But, but they try to get the Latin and black vote. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I don't trust none of the politicians anyway. I always tell you that. Like, they just be talking to me. No, you don't, don't. Why you do know? you say that? You got to have, you got to trust in somebody. Nah, you know, I'm trying to leave America. I don't trust none of this. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, my God. <laughs> They've been lying to us for years about all type of stuff. Politicians, um, the highest votes for Trump was in Texas. And in Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> in Florida and Texas. So that's a high count of Latinos in them areas. In like both. LA, like California too. You yeah. got to think about it. Texas, California, and um, Florida. Mm -hmm. Majority of where Latinos live. And in Texas and in Florida, they, he got the majority of the Latin vote. Cubans, y'all are not white. <laughs> I don't know why y'all think that. Like, you guys voted for Trump. I don't get it. I want to know if there's any Cubanos out there. Yo quiero saber por qué. Dígame. Por qué ustedes están... Or... Por qué Trump? You know what I'm saying? Por qué Trump. Por qué Trump. Exactly. Why? Why were you guys voting for him? I'm just curious. You know? What do you think about that? I don't know. We're just going to see how this... It says about 30% of Hispanic voters have chosen to vote Republican in presidential elections. So 30%, that's a lot. Yeah. 
but it's still majority, still democratic <laughs> then, right? Yeah. That increase, and it's been increasing since 2022. I mean, 2020. What was it in 2020? Does it say? No, it doesn't say. Republicans unsurprisingly celebrated the shift and have portrayed it as a sis seismic shift that could transform the parties. It's so true. <clears throat> oh, Because as the Latin is. communities grow, mm -hmm. man, if they continue to win the vote, 30%. Of Hispanics voters are voting for the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. I just want to name. I just want to know por qué. Yeah. Yo no sé. What? <laughs> yeah, like, no Yo idea. no sé. I'm curious. You know, even in my, you know, people saying uh, on the TikTok uh, video that I posted, like. Trump 2024. Why Trump 2024? Like, what is Trump? What is his slogan for 2024? Mm -hmm. Have they announced it? I think they, um, I don't know. I, I didn't look at the Republican um, slogans for 2024. Curious to know. I'm curious to know. Let's Google that. His, let's see. His new slogan is... Because the first slogan was, let's make America great again, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, I don't see it. Can I... No? Okay. Hmm. Let me see. I'm searching right now. It's the messaging for Latinos, I think. Because if you think immigration was one of the, the top things that he focused on um, for his election, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Make so. America great and glorious again. Maga Gaga. Magaga. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. For 2024? Yeah, same thing. Make America great and glorious again. Oh, Lord. That that sounds stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, I never but, liked Trump, you know. Oh, my God. So it says, engagement beyond immigration. While immigration is an important issue for many Latinos, Trump's gains suggest that other factors, such as the economy, also play a role. So there... How can Latinos be less focused on immigration? <laughs> what? I, I don't get it. Like, how can we? Yeah, I have nothing to say. I don't know either. Like, How can we be less focused on immigration? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying, though? No, 100%. That's what we should be focused on. On immigration. Yeah, exactly. The economy is, we don't have no control over that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the we high, the, uh, the big picture is we don't really have Yeah, the people in power do. have control over the economy. So why would you Latinos not be focused on immigration? I don't get it. That should be the the main thing. Cuz as we continue, we come to this country for the opportunity to become something better and and in the hopes of taking care of our families in other countries mm -hmm. we come here this is the Stacks land of opportunity bread, yeah, yeah. yeah. in other countries panama the minimum wage i don't know now it's probably a dollar or two i don't oh, it's know still low like that it's st i mean i it used to be back in the day maybe it's higher now maybe it's like five dollars now minimum wage but in other countries and foreign countries the minimum wage is really low so coming here, the opportunity to work and make more money is better. It says people make between three hundred twenty-six dollars to nine hundred seventy-one dollars a month. That's a the month. Minimum. A month. A month. Yeah. So divide three hundred and twenty dollars by forty hours. Forty hours a week. I mean, forty by one sixty. Yeah. So less than two dollars, like I said. Yeah. So. We come to this country to better ourselves and our families and give them opportunities in our country to live better, right? To build houses, to... Our dollar goes more, it goes a long way there. Mm -hmm. Because we make more of it. Yeah, Here. So it's three PAB, what's that? Like, what, 
What type of money do they use? No, they use the American dollar. Oh, in Panama? Yeah. Oh, okay. They used Where? to use the Balboa, but now it's the American dollar. So, and it's equivalent. You know what I'm saying? $10 is $10 there. But mm -hmm. my whole point is that the minimum wage is still low. They're not making $7. What's minimum wage here in the U.S.? Um, I think it is, well, in Georgia, you know, it's different in every state. Yeah. So what's the minimum wage here in Georgia? So just imagine immigrants coming to Georgia to work because they can send money home. Georgia minimum wage is still pretty low compared to everywhere else. It's $7.25. That's the same. It done been seven twenty five for forever, too. Yeah. seven twenty five here in Georgia? Yeah. Man, that ain't nothing. That's what I'm saying. How do you support yourself off of $7.25 an hour? You're busting your ass. No, trust me. I know. I made minimum wage when we first moved back down here. What was it like 12 years ago? <laughs> and it's still the same thing. You know, and looking at, you know, I, I didn't believe nothing Trump said the whole time he was president. Mm -hmm. You're creating jobs, but the, the job market is still, you know couldn't find jobs you know people not high paying jobs or quality jobs you know what i'm saying so it's like okay the tax cuts okay that's cool for people that get actually get tax cuts mm -hmm. when you make a certain amount of uh, money you're you don't benefit off of none of that you understand what i'm saying yeah, so it's no like you. come on y'all do your research know what you're voting for know who you're putting in office for me, I'm always going to believe Lou. I'm going to keep saying that. But I'm just saying, if you're going to make a decision, Latinos, come on. Immigration should be the main reason that you're voting for somebody. Their immigration policy should be very important. Yeah. What are they trying to do? Because before you could come to the United States, if you were born here, you were considered a citizen. Yeah, they don't do that for no children. I think they still do that, yeah, but the parents sure get sent back. Yeah, and that's crazy to me. A lot of parents got sent back. Do y'all not remember the, the the people in cages? Yeah. Come on. This was Trump. Yeah, that was Trump that was doing that weird shit. They're putting your damn people in cages and separating children from their mothers. The fuck? And y'all sitting here voting for him? Oh, come on now. Y'all are retarded. I'm sorry. He don't want nobody to come over here. This is the land of opportunity. The land of the free and the brave. <laughs> <laughs> the free and the brave. I'm trying to get the hell out of here. He said, no, let me just say, I, I was raised here in the United States. I don't have nothing against it, but I just feel like, you know, you have to work hard to get where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Same thing for them. They're in these countries that their minimum wage is very low. Most people bring home $300 salaries a week. People live with their parents. Latinos live with their parents for a long time. That's one thing I could say about the Latin community is that vivimos juntos. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, Tu tía, tu tío, tu primos, everybody living in the same house. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Stack that money up. You're stacking. You know what you're doing? You're providing um, a foundation, basically. Y'all are all working together to pay bills so that everyone, every family can go off and buy their own house, ready, their own yeah. piece of land. One thing I could say about them, they come here and they hustle. They might be carpenters, painters, contractors, but they start their own business, landscapers. Like, mm -hmm. they going to come in here and grind to get what they need to be able to establish a foundation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we do. We stick together. We'll live in the same house. You know that. We live with Uncle Mike for a yeah, while. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you got to do what you got to do. You go through a divorce. You got to go live with your siblings or whatever. We're always open door. We have an open door policy. Yeah, I always be thinking about You remember Kike? Kike. Yeah, it was a bunch of them living in that crib. Because of Corey? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> it was a bunch of them living together. You yeah. know why? Because they were trying to establish themselves exactly. in the United States. And these people didn't have papers. They were illegally here. It's a lot of people illegally here working, but they find a way. 
they will find a way. You won't see a bunch of Mexicans working in a, a, a McDonald's or a Burger King or anything like that. And I hate to say maybe a bunch of Latinos li working in those type of jobs. They'll go out here and find their own way. Mm -hmm. Whatever they were doing in their country, they're going to come here and establish roots here to do the same thing. And like you said, they're going to live together until they can get out on their own and, and make something for themselves and for their kids. They're going to hustle. Yeah. I ain't mad at them. That hustle mentality will get you somewhere. I've seen my mother was here first generation Panamanian in the United States. Six kids. Six kids made something, did something for herself. You know what I'm saying? It's the struggle. When you come from that, those are your roots. That's all you know. That's all you know. Yeah, I always used to say, I don't know how you was working two jobs and going to school at the same time. Heck yeah. I was coming in. I was tired. Can I say I was tired? Cansada. That's mm -hmm. what I was. <laughs> tired as hell <laughs> from working, you know, two jobs. And even when I, gra hey, I graduated with, from college with a master's degree and was still working two jobs. Because I was going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. Like I had to do what I had to do. Because I was accustomed to having six figures in the house. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what it's like to struggle. And I'm not going to ever struggle like that. I'm going to get out here and get it. That's what By any means necessary. That's the hustle mentality that immigrants put in their kids' heads. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to get out here and get it for yourself. Yeah, it's up to you. Is college an avenue? I mean, for me, because I was a female, college was the avenue for me to, you know, that's what they pushed me. Make sure you go to college. Make sure you go to college. I got married when I was 19 years old. I stayed home. Your dad went to school first. Then I went to college. I didn't go to college until I was in my 30s. So, you know, at some point, like I said, you have to get out here and figure it out. We had to figure it out. We had kids early. You know what I'm saying? So it's <sighs> Latinos, we need to stick together. That's all I can say. We do, though. You know what I'm saying? We'll open our doors to our family members. I always say, my kids can always come back home if you need to. Look at Zaul's here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and I'm going a, I'm to a make sure I don't make him pay rent or nothing like that because I know he's trying to figure, his, figure out what he needs to do. Yeah, next steps in Next life. steps. What's your action plan? As long as you have an action plan in place, I don't care. I don't charge him no rent. He don't pay no electricity. My friends are like, you, you're not making, you're making him codependent, but I don't think it's that. Nah, He's he very really. independent. I'm about to let him start paying his cell phone bill, though. Yeah, I, oh, he don't pay his cell phone bill? No. <laughs> I'm about to lit. take him off my plan. No, but I always think that well, in the black community is more so not in the Latin community because you were saying they keep people they be at home with their families. But yeah. In the black community, as soon as it's eighteen, they be like, you know. Oh, I know. I was married to a black man. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying <laughs> I never understood that. My I'm kids like, need to either go to college or go in the army. It's like what? What do you mean? They got to go to college or go in the army. They can live at home and go to college. Yeah, I never understood why, like. I don't have kids and I don't plan on it. But if I had kids, I'd want them to like having a car payment is so, like Za has a car payment. You know yeah, what that's I mean? his so, responsibility. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'll be very honest the, with these kids. I made him get his own car insurance. Mm -hmm. So what they pay in car insurance for it's, a person under the age of 26, yeah, it's, it's a lot of money. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I can't tag on rent to that. Yeah. I can't make you responsible for I mean, for he's just going to be struggling, you know, and it's just like, I don't why want make that your for kids him. struggle if you don't have to, if they don't have to I don't struggle. want that for him. Because, you know, we done been on our own since I was like 20, 21. We had yeah. our own spot, and that's all I knew. But yeah. I'm like, why, though, if we didn't have to? But, you know, we was having problems with our father at yeah, the time. Yeah, so y'all so laugh. Like, I, I helped y'all get an apartment. Yeah, like, yeah. I, this, I, since you didn't want to live at home, okay, well, then you get out here and you, you get it for you yourself. I'll go work, ahead and yeah. put my name on this apartment for you, but you're going to have to figure it out. Because hey, I ain't paying it for it. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Y'all figured it out. It out. always figured it but out. But you knew you all could always come back home if you wanted to. Nah, we couldn't. Not at that time. Yeah, probably not <laughs> at no, that time. No, we couldn't but, at that time. But I'm just saying, like, we have to support each other. We can't, you can't get ahead if you're, exactly. you're I, I wish I was, uh, really, I wish I could do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Not as far as, like, family and kids, but, like, career path and, and making sure that, you know, 
You go to college. I wish I, I mean, I could have just got a basic degree. I went and got a master's degree, then a doctorate. Like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, it wasn't even necessary. Yeah, you're saying that didn't it do. No, because now I'm I'm one of these people that owe a lot of money in student loans. Yeah. I ain't never going to see the end of it. People that like me that have been to college and got all this degree. Yeah, I got all this degree. And thank you because it does afford me to make the money that I make. I'm comfortable. But at the end of the day, I still owe a lot of student loans. Biden didn't buy me out. <laughs> what? I was just about to say that. You be pl- uh, pledging for the Democrats and Biden. I know. But, it's, <laughs> I, but you know what? It's people out here, I guess, that, that you know, deserve it. The people that work in nonprofits, the people that work oh, is that who he urban, really made yeah, for? like in schools and stuff. They're the ones that got their loans paid off. They deserve mm-hmm. that. I don't work in that type of environment, oh, yeah. so I, I make pretty good money. That makes so sense I'm not though. I'm not complaining, but at the end of the day it's like, yeah, you take these loans it's like we need to financially understand i think you don't uh, you fully don't understand it even as an adult going to college you really don't fully understand this debt and how you're gonna have to pay it back yeah. i think they send you the loan stuff and you're like sign 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 yep, sign, yep. sign sign you're not even reading the dotted lines you're like oh i get the bread i don't spend back you're like oh extra couple thousand to her yeah bet dumb stuff <laughs> yeah. dumb stuff that i made mistakes too because at that time like i you know i was working but i wasn't making a lot of money mm. i was working two jobs like i was trying to put myself through school so at that time you're not looking you're not really focused on i'm gonna have to pay this back this interest doesn't go away. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much you pay. What Biden needs, what I'm going to task y'all with is figuring out why we're paying 5% interest daily on a student loan. That shit makes no sense. Let's start fighting for that. Because these kids, all we're showing them is that you're going to be in debt when you come out of school. I mean, we're born in debt. Because you know that they take a loan out on this. Yeah, your social security yeah, number. Yeah, your social security number. So it's like, that's what they do. And they've been doing forever. The United States of America. I always tell my cousins in Panama, like, y'all got it better than I do. I don't own my house. I'm still paying a mortgage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you are better off than I am. You guys, your cars are paid for. <laughs> Mines are not. Yo estoy pagando todos los meses, amor. Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, you are in a better place. You own your home. You own your land. I don't own my land. I don't own my home. You're doing way better than I am. Just because I make way more money than you do. Yeah, but yeah. you don't owe nobody anything. Mm-hmm. I owe the government student loans. A lot. Yeah. I don't think I'll see the light of day when it comes to paying them things off. And I have a girlfriend that's like, oh, I just paid off my student loans. And I'm like, oh, for real? God bless you. Because, yeah. damn, that is excellent. I'm trying to buy other properties. I'm trying to live in Panama. I'm not. Once I leave the United States for good, I'm gone. I don't give a damn what you do with my debt. Mm-hmm. I ain't paying y'all. That's what I'm saying. Y'all going to have to come get that. You have to come to, <laughs> come to Panama, come looking for me because I'm not, I'm not paying y'all when I'm able to leave and not I ain't paying you shit. That's a lot of money. And then they don't have taxes in Panama either, right? Yeah, we pay taxes. I, I thought it wasn't. I thought it was the property taxes. I mean, not them. Like tax taxes. tax. Tax tax. I don't yeah. know. I don't think there's taxes because a lot so. of people, a lot of people start corporations there, so they don't have to pay taxes. Oh, you might be right. I know we have property taxes for mm. sure because on my mom's property, we had some property taxes. But uh, I'm talking about like how they take taxes out of your check and stuff like that. Like for um, oh, when you buy something, yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, they, uh, it's something in the. It's not oh, the same. Oh, I think they do have tax. No, it might be on buying stuff, but it's not. You're, like you on don't goods and file services. Taxes every year, type. Oh no no yeah, no! Like how oh we are, heck, yeah, that's no, what I'm saying. You yeah. don't even get food stamps yeah. there. Oh okay, okay okay. You don't get public assistance. Okay, but There's that's no what public our tax assistance. money is supposed to be going towards. Like yeah, no, we don't get none of that. The roads are bad. The roads are bad. You yeah. just <laughs> the roads bad here still anyway. Yeah, so we're paying matter. all this money in tax money, and and you know we're roads paying all this tax money, and 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 we're not getting anywhere. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, how long have we been? Uh, Forty six minutes. Oh, really? It just seems so much longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about though. With that being said, I was reading an article about single women 
owning more homes than single men. That's about right. You think so? Yeah. Why do you think that, though? I think more men would live with other people just to make the circumstances. With other women? No, with the women that actually own their homes? That, too. <laughs> that, too. But... um. Just men are men are gonna live together to have lower rent costs. Oh, like roommates. And men be trying to do it by themselves. You know what? Women be that trying is to do so it by true. That, yeah, yeah. There's more men having roommates than exactly. women roommates. Because women, are, I'm not gonna say struggle, but they just gonna they figure gonna it out, to figure hustle it out. to yeah. do it by themselves. When a you don't lot have to of, um, do that. I'm gonna say a majority of my girlfriends that have been single before they got married that didn't get married until later on in life, they all had their own homes, like yeah. in their twenties. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that really... And I guess men, when you have a family, it's different because you want your family to own a home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they were saying, the article said that more single women, like a really high percentage of single women had owned their homes more than single men. Yeah, heck yeah. That makes sense. And y'all single men, stop living with your girlfriends. (laughs) Stop moving in with your girlfriends and and being over there. Because you don't own nothing over there. You got to establish your own ownership of stuff. Right? I guess. You know, I don't care about none of that. Yeah, you don't. You're leaving. You don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm but out. I'm just saying for men, a lot of men do live with their girlfriends. Yeah. A majority of them. Probably Think so. about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, what did I break? Oh, I'm pl- yeah. Sorry, y'all. I'm I think that um, women are having um, just... They're having their time in the employment. Like, they're getting better paid women jobs be- before yeah. men. They're the women. ones, grad- like you said, women, women out here are hustling. going to college and stuff more than Degrees, men. Degrees, yeah. I, I agree with that. I think, um, yeah, I think a lot of, um, like I said, a lot of my single girlfriends had homes before they were 25. Yeah. Bought their fir- first homes right out of college, which is pretty good. Men ain't buying houses right out of college. Oh, because we'll rather be four in there. No, because y'all going to buy a, a car before you buy a house. Uh, Right? You might have two and three cars and living in an apartment. I, I'm going to tell you no, in my I've 20s when I that, was yeah. single or when I was dating, I, a lot of men that I did know lived in an apartment and they were driving very expensive cars. Mm-hmm. But you're living in an apartment. Why are you driving uh, an expensive car if you're living in an apartment? That's you backwards. should have a garage to park it in. I mean, that's just my opinion. I'm sorry. Some of y'all going to get mad at me. But I'm just saying, if you're driving a luxury car... And I'm going to say luxury by maybe a 7 Series BMW, an Audi A8. Like, if you're driving an, a Porsche, a Maserati, maybe you should not be living in an apartment. <laughs> uh-huh. What do you think about that? I mean, it depends on where the apartment is. If it's downtown... Oh. Okay. You know, well, so, maybe, maybe yeah. if it's a luxury yeah, apartment. Some people really just don't want to own houses. That's They're true like, too. I don't want because that it, I'm going to tell you, owning a house is, is a, a lot, lot of damn work. work. Yeah, I imagine. I see just what see what y'all got to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know it's I'm a not lot ready of work. For that yet. If like, something breaks, you got to get it fixed. Yeah, exactly. It's always <clears> something. <throat> I swear, as soon as I get a certain amount of money stacked up, some break. Something happens. And here go my money. I done stacked up. It makes me so mad. Yeah. That that happens. I'm like, damn, I just, I can't even buy me a handbag because I got to go spend money on this daggone thing that just broke. Makes me so mad. (sighs) You got to learn how to save. You got to learn how to uh, manage your money. It's very important. It's hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm going to say, the more money you make, the more more money you spend. Every time. That is so true. But if you can learn to not spend it and just you know live below your means and you real you'll be real wavy i (laughs) I always say it's not about how much money you make it's about how much money you You save save. yeah that's so true i said for 2024 my spending habits were going to be way better my spending habits were going to be a lot less Uh and better um and my saving habits were going to be better Mm -hmm. are you off to a good start we a month yeah, I'm in. I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> we a month in. I'm gonna, we're only a month in. I'm yeah. going to give myself till March 1st okay. to kind of get myself. I think I needed to get myself acclimated to some other things that I need to take care of so that I can begin to save my money. Mm-hmm. Because I do want to save. I think that I think I, every time I get promoted, 
I always say, I'm going to take the money that I got through my promotion. I'm just going to put it away. Yeah. Never happens, y'all. Because you're like, matter of fact, I deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that knows me, I'd be yeah. like, I deserve yeah, this. Yeah, I'm yeah. going out and buying it. That's what I tell. That's, how, that's what, how I think. Yeah, I know. I done worked hard. I deserve this. I'm going to go buy this handbag. I'm going to go. <laughs> I never tell myself no. And I need to start saying, I don't really need that. And that's ultimately. I really don't need that. I, I'm like that with everything. <laughs> Shoes. I'm like, do I really need these? Like, I got already got a pair that got this color in them. Do I really need this pair? But I was like, yeah, I really need it. Yeah. When you really don't. <laughs> so I got to just do better. Just to do better. Be more wise about your spending habits. Especially if you are trying to purchase a home, a new car. Make sure that you're saving. You're supposed to be saving a certain percentage of your check every month and putting it in a savings. So... I just, you know, want people to understand that, you know, you have to work hard at these New Year's resolutions. Because people, that was my New Year's resolution, was to save more money. Like you said, I ain't gotten there yet. We got to work hard on these New Year's resolutions and not give up in the first month. I gave up after like January 15th. That's about right. That's what usually happens to everybody. (laughs) It's crazy. You give up so quickly, it's like, oh. No, it was a bunch of people who quit drinking in January, and they back at the bars right now. Really? <laughs> they back at my bar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're drinking all bars over Bars starting again. to pick back up. Yeah. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to do this. Don't even limit yourself. Just say, I'm going to change the way I save money. I'm going to change the way I spend money. I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you, um, I was watching something, I think it was, uh, I think it was Ari Fletcher. That's um, the girlfriend of what's his name? I really like him, the rapper. I don't know. I've heard her name. Before, um, I'm not too sure. Oh God, I can't think of his name. I really like him. I'm about to see right now. Money bag, yo. Yeah. Money bag, <laughs> yeah. And she was talking about putting her son in designer clothes that she doesn't buy him designer clothes. Yeah, because he gonna grow out of them joints. So true. Like, why would you? And I see a lot of, and I guess they feel like they can afford it. Why? Why wouldn't they Mm -hmm. if they're wearing it? But I always think you can invest that in their education. As much money as you're spending on a pair, I know what we spend as adults on shoes and stuff. It's got to be. And then for them to wear it for such a little time, and then maybe as they get older, maybe. Yeah. But she was saying that she doesn't buy her son designer clothes for that reason. And them designer clothes be expensive as I don't know what. So I imagine they still super expensive even for children. A Gucci shirt is like eight hundred dollars. For children? For kids? For no, for adults. Yeah. For kids, uh, see what a Gucci sweater costs for a kid. Let's see. A Gucci pair of sneakers, like you—that's money you can invest in their education. Why would you spend that? Three hundred dollars. Four hundred. No, it's about the same price as it is. As if for an adult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what? a t-shirt for an adult. So 425. Like, nah. why would you spend that kind of money on your kid knowing that they're not those clothes? I mean, what are you gonna do with this clothes? Are you gonna that keep them knows. for your next kid? Are you gonna hand me downs? Like, what are you gonna do with these clothes? You're gonna have to give them away to somebody. Somebody gonna I'm And that's a three hundred dollar sweater, a three hundred dollar pair of shoes. Like, that's so crazy. Why would you spend that kind of money? I know you gotta rethink that's why I'm saying you have to rethink on how you you do things. It's it's you gotta make it a way of life and not a change or a resolution or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna live my life this way and I'm not gonna spend this kind of money. I'm not going to buy designer stuff for my kids. I'm not you gotta set your own rules and your own boundaries as far as how you're going to do things Mm -hmm. that's my opinion that's just titi's opinion give me my two cents back if you don't want it i'm just saying what was what i'm going to do for me is rethink how i do things instead of saying i don't tell myself no that's my problem yeah but i feel like i've always been like that what never told yourself no (laughs) Mm -mm. (laughs) You might that might just be your that's your character trait. That's my character flaw. <laughs> Cause you got to tell yourself no at some point. Like yeah. nah, you don't really. It's need just me. all about do I really need this? Yeah, cause sometimes I'm gonna tell you with designer stuff, you can't buy it and take it back and uh-huh. use it and take it back. Uh-huh. Not like 
It's not like going to Walmart and you buy something, you might wear it or something and then try to take it back to Walmart. It's not the, it's not the same level. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I just bought a pair of earrings mm -hmm. from Fendi. Are those the ones you got on now? No. No, these okay. are Machino. Look. <laughs> but, <laughs> Look. You know, I love Machino. And she's trying to save money, though. I'm guys. trying to save money. But anyway, <laughs> I just bought a pair of earrings from Fendi and they came defected. I didn't wear them the first month that I had them because I don't wear stuff as soon as I get, oh, I'm going to put this on. Mm -hmm. I waited probably about two months before I wore them. And when I went to wear them, it didn't, the clasp didn't work. Yeah. So me, I'm like, I just paid $800 for these earrings. I'm going to go. I bought them online. I was like, where can I take them to? Because they need to be, I need, I don't want no refund. I just need the earrings that work. Yeah, I want a new pair. Yeah. You know what they told me? They ain't take them back. Hell no. That's grimy. What? They told me we can repair them for you. Oh, okay. Now, these you are a pair of to... earrings that yeah. never been worn. Yeah, so you got paid. <laughs> I got to pay you. <laughs> well, the repair is free. Oh, all right, then. But I can't just give you these brand new earrings and you give me another pair back. No, it doesn't work that way. That's why I say... Be conscious about how you spend your money. Did they repair them? You got them fixed up? They've been there for six weeks. They still repairing them. <laughs> They're still repairing them, y'all. So I, I, I even, I sent them, I sent them several messages like, where are my earrings? Like, now that I want to wear them, yeah, they're not worried I about can't you. wear them because y'all have them. And no one, customer service, Fendi, y'all customer service is fucked up. No one has even reached out to me to even say, hey, Miss Gonzalez, you know what? We got your earrings here. They're being worked on. I, for six weeks, I haven't heard from anybody. I don't even know. Did y'all keep my earrings? <laughs> I don't know what y'all are doing. But my whole point is that you spend the money, and really, at the end of the day, it's not worth it. Hey, Fendi, send us them earrings, man. Send me my earrings back. I want them. <laughs> I want and it, them. it's funny because for Christmas, you know, you guys gifted me uh -huh. money, and I went and bought another pair. And I feel like I done spent all this money with y'all and y'all can't just replace my earrings? Yeah, that's crazy. It ain't going to stop you from buying Fendi earrings. It probably though. won't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just mad because it's like, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Spend your money wisely. Yeah. But you know, a lot of them design, them top designers, they be acting too good. They're like, we don't care if we get your money or not. Like Because they make so this, much money. Yeah, somebody's you know what buy I'm saying? Stuff. It doesn't matter. They make so much money. Yeah. I've never bought none of that designer I'm stuff. I'm glad. Though. You started off pretty strong with being materialistic. Yeah, I'm glad you ended up not that, being yeah. I materialistic. Used to care. I used to be, yeah. Yeah. It you used to be. Yeah, I did. Because I remember paying $220 for some sneakers. Yeah, $250 for some sneakers. Yeah, but then I realized it didn't make me... Like, I was cool no matter what I did. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So, like, the, the clothes don't make you. It doesn't. No. Nah. Yeah. It didn't never made me who I was, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, it doesn't make me who I am either. Yeah, I just like it. nice yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> but, for sure. My mother created a monster. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is how I grew up. Being an only girl in a household with yeah. five brothers. I was spoiled. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I went to the Bloomingdale's. I went to the, the stores where there was... Dis I remember going to the store with my mom and she bought an $800 dress. That's crazy. Like, I was like, oh, I can't wait to be an adult. And that's, and that's <laughs> back then. So that $800. Imagine. That it was Gucci back then. Yeah, yeah. So, so just, just imagine. A... She, made me, she made me the monster, the label monster yeah. that I am. Because label monster. I like nice. No, but I like nice stuff. I do. And it doesn't have to be designer all the time. But yeah. if you're spending that kind of money. You really have to think about where your money is going to. Like, I didn't do this a lot when I had you guys and you guys were little. Mm -hmm. Now that it's just it's me, just why you, not? you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing me. Exactly. Why not? I mean, I did have designer handbags and stuff but and shoes, but it wasn't as bad. Yeah. I think I was actually worse then than I am now. Do you think so? I think you're worse now. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm worse now? Yeah. Damn. Because nobody can tell you. You was you were working, but you're really working. You're yeah, in a your career dad now. took care. I'm going to yeah, say your dad took care like, of all the bills. Exactly. Like, my money was my money. I could spend it on whatever I wanted. But, yeah, now because you 
handle everything, you know, being on your own, nobody really can tell you anything. So no. you're like, I do what I want. Exactly. <laughs> My life. Me vida, and I'm gonna live it how I want to live it. Like at the end of the day, Sean is always Sean is my financial planner, and he's always telling me like, "Mom, did you really just spend this money on that?" I'm like, yeah, why not? I, you only live one time. Just don't do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. Your kids <laughs> don't. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, little kids, you shouldn't be spending that kind of money on designer wear no, for your is, kids. Really, it has to make sense. Like really, at the end of the day. Um, I ain't trying to create no monsters on this podcast. I just think spend your money wisely. At the end of the day, you're going to have to retire at some point. Sean told me I need to be focused on retiring. I mean, he speak of facts. Don't worry about my retirement. <laughs> I'm going to go to Panama and I'm going to live off of $500 a month. I already know it. You know what I'm saying? I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Don't worry about me. Worry about you. And let me live my life how I live it. For now. Yeah, you'll have enough Fendi by then. You won't even need to buy me. I won't even, probably would never wear Fendi. I, I'm going to tell you, when I go to Panama, I don't take anything designer. Mm. Nothing. So what's the I, point in buying it? Because the United States is different from <laughs> Panama, <laughs> I guess. But I don't take anything designer. Nothing, because I'm afraid to get robbed. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to just tell you. Because they know, it's funny, because my, my little cousins, like if you had something designer on, they'd be like, oh... That's such and such. And I was like, how do they know mm -hmm. that it's designer? But people know. You get robbed out there. I would never. I don't even wear gold jewelry or any jewelry when I'm out there. Out there. I'm just plain. I'm in the country. Yeah, trying to blend right in. I'm blending in with everybody. I'm wearing flip-flops and a pair of shorts, tank top. That's how I'm all day, every day. Yeah. You ain't got to be flashy over there. So I'm going to take all my stuff that I have and I'll probably sell it. And probably can live off yeah, of that that's money. That's what I say. There, there go your retirement right there. Right there. Just to resell everything. That's the one thing about designer stuff, though, that you can resell it, it and it holds value. Yeah, for sure. It does hold and value. And even sometimes goes up in price. Like them vintage. Oh, yeah, vintage. And stuff. Yeah. Oh, my God. Them vintage pieces are, you can't find, a lot of vintage pieces you can't even find anymore. Mm -hmm. So, And I like vintage. I really do. I think that's where Zaul gets it from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think Zaul kind of <laughs> is a little bit like me. Well, Sean, Sean used to spend a lot of money. Oh, yeah. He got a lot of nice things, too. Yeah. He would go, but let he, him close the house. He'd yeah, go that's and what buy I'm a pair of like Louboutins a, and be like, oh, I got a yes, $2,000 pair of Louboutins yeah. and a Gucci shirt and this and that. that. Yeah, it was all celebratory, though, yeah. for like important Yeah, he would celebrate so, like that. So he wasn't just doing it for no reason. No. Yeah, yeah, it was you're all right. celebratory. But he things. does, um, he like nice stuff, too. But that's Zaul. Zaul's going to be... <laughs> Boy, I don't know. I think right now, because he don't really have the money, he'll he'll splurge on certain pieces. Yeah. But when he has the money, oh yeah, he's gonna go crazy. Boy, he's gonna know. spend money. I see it coming. All right. Anything else, producer? You want to talk about? Mm. Nope, that's about it for this. I week. Had, I kind of wanted to talk about divorce today, but I. I'm, we're going to save that for another day. Yeah, it don't feel like the divorce type of... No, the conversation doesn't lead to it. Divorce type of weather. <laughs> oh, my God. No, uh, my neighbor just texted me. Oh, my God. I got to get over there. Okay. Said, <laughs> I was talking about my lawn man. He was like, why your lawn man cut all my trees? <laughs> he must have cut all the trees on the side of the house. Yeah, yeah. They were his trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I just told him clean everything up. Oh, God. Now I got to call my... See, this is why I talk about when I say the quality of the work is good. Yeah. He cut my stuff he and my and neighbor's stuff. There. Yeah, look. <laughs> no, that's hilarious. No, but I think we good, though. Yeah, we are good. So we are out on Teacher's House Podcast. We're good to close the podcast for the for the day. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma all right, good then. All right, everyone, thanks for coming out and watching that at Teacher's House Podcast. Remember, you can find us on... Um, Apple Podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. YouTube, we had a lot of comments I didn't even see. Yeah, on YouTube. Why didn't I get the notifications for the comments? Oh, because you wasn't logged into YouTube. Oh, is that why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh. you are now, though, so. So now I should get the notification. Because there was a lot of comments out there that I didn't, yeah. I didn't even see. No, YouTube is funny. Oh, boy, they was coming. <laughs> they was coming for on the YouTube comments, too. Yeah. I was hoping that our YouTube following would continue to rise but it seems like it's just everyone no, is on other 
YouTube is going up more than everything else. Oh, the really? views, yeah, the views. The what? views are just going up. Just give it more month, a couple more months. Just starting to gain traction. There. Okay, okay. Because I thought it would because that's where we originally started. Yeah, we've done more views this year than we did last year already, and it's only been a month. Oh, that's great. That's okay. what I'm telling you. Y'all, yeah, right? get me syndicated because I'm trying to go. I'm trying to have my own show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Eventually have my own show. So come on, I mean, on, you do you have your own show. This is your own this show. This is my own show. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of people that want to do podcasts, but they don't know how yeah, to they don't begin. Know how to do it. And how to do it. And I've been asked a lot of times, and I, I've told people, like, I, I have a producer. I would not be able to do this without my yeah. producer. So applaud to the producer because I can't do this by myself. Uh -huh. I don't have time to edit videos and do all that good stuff. So I, you know, I applaud you and thank you for, you know, coming along this journey. Yeah, let's keep going. As we continue to grow and know, <laughs> but um, we're just going to keep at it. All right, then. We're out.